Okay, so we are continuing to work through this introduction to format series in terms of modeling buildings. And while I'm kind of walking through the rough example here of Thorn Crown Chapel, it occurred to me that, you know, this is not a normal building at all. Um, normal buildings are going to have um, walls, windows, roofs, things like that. Um, Thorn Crown really is made up of trusses and glass and a roof. So one of the things that I do want to do as an aside is cover some basic methods in terms of doing standard walls, doors, and windows in your model. So there are multiple methods of doing this. And old school me kind of likes to use the pencil tool and just sort of draft out some of the basics of a wall. So if I'm doing a, a one foot thick wall that is 60 feet long, I might start organizing that as a series of pieces, not unlike this, as a single wall, working through that. And I'm going to do this, sort of talking through this step by step this time. Pencil tool, line tool, let's draw another one foot piece out this direction. Going the distance of that wall, and if I want to be precise really quickly, I can click the tab key. Let's enter a value of 30 feet for the length of that wall. Hit enter. I'm going to move um, one foot back to the inside again, and then close this out by clicking the end point right here. That makes this a nice solid piece of geometry for me. Right? So um, let's do one more before I extrude this one. Let's just kind of come this direction. Maybe this is a little bit of an inset. Six feet over, one foot over, and back. So now I have two walls right here. From that point, I can start taking these individual walls that I've drafted and extruding them up to give um, everything a little bit of volume. So that is not selecting on an edge here, but left clicking on the polygon itself. That will automatically take you to the push pull tool. I'm going to start the base and just in snap that up to the next one. Same thing here. I can select that base point top and it just starts to put those things together. for me. And as you can see, it's also going to eliminate some of those additional model lines as I go about. So that's the first method is just simply drawing um, or drafting out a two dimension a single wall at a time and then pulling them up using the push-pull tool. Um, it, technically, is it called the push-pull tool? Let's look at that really quick. I want to make sure I'm referring to this as the correct name. Push-pull is uh, probably the term for SketchUp here. Let's right-click and, oh man, it's not even listed. Wow, this is something I should really probably know. But that's okay. We'll chat about that later. We'll just keep calling it push pull. All right. So that's sort of method number one in terms of building walls, in terms of just basic, straightforward, getting some of that architectural geometry together. Because again, unlike a massing model, which is where we often start with format, where the entire building is a box, we actually want each box to be a wall. Right, so that's that's method one. It's a little bit longhand. It's it's very much similar to drafting, old school drafting in AutoCAD, which is sort of my background. Switching from a drafting desk to AutoCAD to 3D to to eventually Revit form it, and so on and so forth. So, being a little bit more productive with this process, I can start with a single line, and I can also just begin drafting out the shapes of my walls with the distances. So thinking of this as drawing a center line, so 30 feet over, 40 feet over, 6 feet. Oh, that was a messed up line. It's one of the things to always watch and form it. You know, I can be drawing at any axis at any time, so that was actually on the blue axis or the Z axis there. So let's erase that, start over. It's always good to be sort of shifting your view around to sort of know what you're drawing or do what I should have been doing, paying attention to the colors of the axes as I'm going. So if you notice that, uh, let's see if I can get it, blue axis, Z axis, that is a vertical line, not really what I was looking for. 
Let's bring it back around this way, make sure it's on the green axis or the y axis so I know exactly what's happening. Okay, so that's a method of drawing out the center line as a single line, okay? At that point, I can double click that chain of lines. I can right click to bring up my options and I can use offset. So in this case, again, if I want a one foot thick wall, I would be hitting tab, six inches and enter. Now note, before you do anything else, this still has the center line left over. The center line is still highlighted. So before you do anything else, unless you want to do a lot of manual cleanup, you want to hit delete. That will get rid of your center line and give you all of those walls and an outside edge. Cool, so next step, I'm just going to select that group of walls and then pull it up, tab, set the height of my walls, and blammo. Much faster, and much more productive way of getting walls put together, assuming that there's a lot of uniformity in those exterior walls. So the next part to talk about is creating the openings for doors and windows. So let's just look at that really quickly here on this wall. Let's put a series of windows in. So again, typically I like to do drafting with things like this. So if I know my sill height is, let's say, three feet up, there's some starting at the base of my wall, and I'm just dragging the line up three feet. And let's say it is an eight foot wide by six foot tall window. I'm simply using that wall as a drafting plane. I want to delete that. That was a guideline for me to bring the sill height of the window up three feet. Then I can select that piece of geometry and I'm going to again use push-pull to push it through the wall and that's going to create that hole for me. If I have a series of uniform windows that I want to create, I can also do that. I'm going to be more of a slop artist with this one here, so let's just do that. And before I do the push-pull, I can select that face and I can do um, an array. Thought I could do an array. Let's just use a copy paste. Well, let's do array. I, want, I, I really wanted to do an array. Arrays are so much fun. But I'm not seeing where the array tool is. Where is the array tool? Come on, array tool. Array, oh, yeah, it was right in front of me. Go figure, okay. So array, we're going to do a linear array. We are going to do this as a total length and let's do five windows, right? So from right here to right here, I've got five windows. Cool. Not cut yet, but I can then just shift click each one of those, or I could have left them selected. And now when I push pull those to the wall, five uniform windows, really, really super fast. So if you have a larger building with uniform windows, something like that, great method to work through that really, really quickly. Same token, if I want to do a door, really similar process. Again, I like the sort of thinking about drafting on the walls. Um, in this case, let's say that the door is four feet from this edge. Again, I'm going to create a, a couple of quick and simple guides. Just align four feet over from the corner. Let's do seven feet up, three feet across, seven feet back down. Now the thing to remember is I do want to erase that guide. Oh, I don't want to erase that guide. Ooh, wow, that was bad news. So anytime that I get rid of a piece of geometry that I should not, right, it's going to delete that face because it's missing this line. When that happens, I can just either control Z and, or, and undo, or usually I can just go ahead and draw that line back in and it'll replace it. Right, so let's take this door again, select it, and again, using the push-pull, just zip it right through and delete. So in the next video, we'll look at actually putting windows and doors into those openings.